on a great day I'ma take my mind I'ma try to fight Take it south and ride To a new place Where I know to fly Above my dark cloud In this video I'm gonna show you how I've used meal prep to save time in my week and how I've used it to lose weight without counting calories. If you've watched my videos, you'll know that I lost 40 pounds years ago and 10 pounds in 2019 when I gained a bit of weight. When I was trying to lose that weight, meal prepping was really, really helpful to me. So I wanted to do another week of meal prepping for you guys. The calories in all my meals are worked out already, so I don't have to think about calories the entire week. So that is what helped me because as you guys know, I don't enjoy counting calories. Nobody does. In this video today, we're gonna do an entire week of meal prep for five days three recipes a day plus snacks it's gonna have all your meals covered I know that this really helps me a lot when I'm really busy and I don't have time to cook which actually happens a lot this meal plan that I'm going to show you today is based off of 1400 calories for a meal plan but I will show you at the end of this video how you can easily adjust the calories to get 1,200 calories, 1,600 calories, 1,800 calories per day. So in this week of meal prep, I'm gonna show you week three, three from my ebook. This week of meal prep is actually from my ebook, Fast Weight Loss Meal Prep for Women, that came out last January. You don't need the ebook to follow through with what I'm gonna show you today in this video, but it's all gonna be written out there for you if you do want that. And there are more weeks of meal prep and recipes in the book. There are four full weeks of meal prep and healthy recipes in the ebook. This is actually just the third week from the book. These recipes that I'm gonna show you today and in my meal prepping ebook are all gluten and dairy free. And I'm also gonna show you vegan alternatives for anything that is not vegan, but it's mostly vegan anyway. In the ebook, there are also substitutions and alternatives for lots of ingredients that I use. There's gluten-free, dairy-free, and nut-free alternatives in the book, as well as plant-based and vegan options. I will link my meal prepping ebook below for you, and you can get it on my blog. So I also have a free shopping list download to go with this video for you, so I'm gonna link that below for you. You can go download it on my blog. It's completely free. You're gonna get a grocery list to all the ingredients that you need if you wanna make these recipes. Follow along with it as we go through. Let's just get started, lots to do. So to prep five full days of meals, you want to start by prepping and cooking the foods that take the longest to cook. Foods that typically take longer to cook are usually the things that require roasting or baking. So starting with these foods will help to create some you know, order in your kitchen and you'll also see everything come together quickly at the end. If you're going to be using reusable Ziploc bags for some of the ingredients, I recommend actually reusing them to avoid waste. All of the meals in this video that I'm showing you and in the ebook breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes are all roughly 400 calories. And then all of the snack recipes are all roughly 200 calories. I've done that so you can mix and match what you like and the quantities. You'll want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 200 degrees Celsius. So we're going to start with shrimp. And you can skip this step if you want to use a vegan alternative, which will be pinto beans. And I'll show you what to do in a moment. So we're just going to let the shrimp thaw so measure out 200 grams of frozen shrimp and leave it out i use pre-cooked peeled and deveined shrimp next the potatoes and the sweet potatoes line a baking tray with some baking paper and you can rinse the potatoes we'll be using roughly 260 grams of potatoes and roughly 200 grams of sweet potatoes chop the potatoes and the sweet potatoes into thin slices and you can get them onto the baking tray i do the potatoes on the one side and the sweet potatoes on the other side you can add a small amount of cooking oil spray to both the potatoes and the sweet potatoes before tossing them add a bit of salt and pepper i like to keep it very simple this way and roast that in the oven oven for 30 to 60 minutes or until they're cooked. We're going to roast some chickpeas as well. You can line a baking tray with some baking paper. You can open a can of chickpeas. I like to rinse them and drain them. You're going to use 250 grams of cooked or canned chickpeas, which is about one and a half cups. You can add the drained chickpeas to the baking tray with a quick spray of cooking oil to give the chickpeas a vegan, cheesy and onion taste. I like to add two tablespoons of nutritional yeast one teaspoon of onion powder and salt and pepper and just toss that all together before putting it in the oven and roast that for about 30 to 40 minutes. I like to toss them and check them every 
10 minutes or so until they're nice and crispy and golden. If you're making additional roasted chickpeas or pinto beans as plant-based or vegan alternatives for the salmon, which we're gonna make for dinner, or the shrimp for lunch, you can roast the additional chickpeas or pinto beans with this batch. Use a little less than one cup of cooked drained pinto beans instead of the 200 grams of shrimp, which we'll be using, and roughly three quarters of a cup of cooked drained chickpeas instead of the 120 grams of salmon that we'll be using. Okay, so get that all in the oven. I love using rice or quinoa or something like that for meal prep. Today we're gonna to be making some brown rice. Add one cup of dry brown rice to a small pot with about three cups of hot water. Bring that to a bowl in the stove and then once it's boiling, you can reduce the heat, cover it with a lid and let it simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes until it's fully cooked. And you can add more water if you need it as you're going. You see, we're moving a lot. So next, we're gonna make some muffins. I love these muffins so much. They are my toaster protein muffins, amazing. Add about two thirds of a cup of rolled oats to a blender or food processor to make some oat flour. If you already have oat flour, you can just use the same amount of that. And then we're gonna peel and roughly smash one wrap banana with a fork. Easy, easy to do. Then we're gonna add the blended oat flour, crack one large egg, and you can mix that with a fork. If you wanna make a plant-based substitute for the egg, you can make a chia egg, which is very easy, in a separate bowl using one tablespoon of chia seeds and about three tablespoons of water. You can leave that to soak separately until it has like a gel-like consistency. Don't add the chia egg to the rest of the mixture immediately, just let it sit and you can add it at the end. Then we're gonna add three tablespoons of cocoa powder, two teaspoons of coconut sugar, or you can use any other sweetener you like, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, one eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of sea salt, a quarter cup of vanilla protein powder, which is about 250 grams of powder. I use a vegan one that's sweetened with stevia, two teaspoons of melted coconut oil, three quarters of a cup of blueberries, one third of a cup of almond milk. You can use any milk you like, dairy or non-dairy. The unsweetened almond milk that I use is roughly 30 to 40 calories per cup, just for a reference for you. And then if you did the chia egg as a vegan alternative, you can add it in last. And mix everything together. And what you'll wanna do is line a muffin tray with some baking papers and spoon an equal amount of butter into each muffin paper, making enough for three equal servings. This recipe makes about 12 small muffins. So one serving is gonna be roughly four muffins, which is a third of the batch. So you're gonna have four muffins for breakfast. What I like to do is have the muffins ready to go in the oven. As soon as the chickpeas or the potatoes come out, then I'm gonna pop the muffins right in there for 20 minutes until they're ready at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 200 degrees Celsius. So same oven temperature. You'll know that the muffins are ready when you can pierce one with a sharp knife and the knife comes out mostly clean. So let's move on. We're gonna prep some veggies, easy veggies. We're gonna make some bell pepper and green beans. So line another baking tray with some baking paper, lots of baking today, and rinse about 500 grams of bell pepper. I like to slice the bell pepper into strips and on an empty baking tray lined with some baking paper, you can add the bell pepper. Add a quick spray of cooking oil before tossing. I like to season the bell pepper slices with chili flakes, salt and pepper. Rinse about 300 grams of green beans. Remove the ends from the green beans. You can do that if you want to, I like to do that. And then I season the green beans with just salt and pepper, keep them very simple and plain because we're gonna be eating them with curry. So have those ready to go into the oven as soon as the chickpeas, the potatoes, all the muffins come out and then pop them in there right away. Bake these vegetables for about 15 to 30 minutes until they're ready at the same oven temperature. Next, we're gonna do some salmon. Lana, another baking tray with some baking paper. You'll be taking things in and out of the oven so you will have freed up some oven trays, just in case you're wondering. So cut 120 grams of salmon fillet into two pieces. I like to squeeze a bit of lemon or lime juice over the salmon with some salt and some pepper and bake them in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes until it's cooked to how you like it. If you're doing the vegan option for the salmon, you will have already been cooking the extra chickpeas in the oven. For the shrimp, you can add the 200 grams of thawed shrimp to a frying pan with a small amount of cooking oil spray, some lemon or lime juice, some pepper, some sea salt, a sprinkle of onion powder, and a pinch of chili flakes or chili powder. That's optional. You can toss that over the stove over a medium high heat for about 
you know, two minutes roughly. Keep in mind that the shrimp can really easily overcook. And if you wanted to do the vegan option, you would already have some pinto beans roasting in the oven with the chickpeas. We're going to be making some curry now. You can either do a chicken curry or a vegan curry. Chop half of a medium onion into fine pieces, fine-ish pieces, and add that to a frying pan with some cooking oil spray, just a little bit. You can cook that over a medium-high heat on the stove until the onion starts to brown. You can add a small amount of water to the pan if it gets too dry to prevent it from burning. Cut about 360 grams of chicken breast meat into smallish pieces and you can add that to the pan along with the onion to start cooking it. If you'd prefer the vegan alternative, you can add either one plus one third of a cup of chickpeas or one plus half a cup of pinto beans instead of the chicken. Then I like to slice about three cups of cherry tomatoes into pieces, so either halves or quarters, and add that to the onions and the chicken. And after you've added the onion, the chicken and the tomatoes to the pan, you can add one to two teaspoons of curry powder. Add that according to your taste, one teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of ginger powder, salt, pepper, and a squeeze of lime or lemon juice. You can cover that with a lid and stir it occasionally for a few minutes over a medium heat. And once it's cooked, just remove it and let it sit aside. Make sure the chicken is fully cooked before removing it, but you don't want to overcook it. That's not going to be good. We are getting through it. So chop the other half of that medium onion into small pieces and cook that in another frying pan with a small amount of spray, cooking oil spray, over a medium high heat until it's you know slightly brown, not burned again. Add a small amount of water if you need to while cooking it so it doesn't burn. Then you can rinse and slice 200 grams of cauliflower and 160 grams of Brussels sprouts into pieces and add them to a pan with the onion. Cook those vegetables over a medium heat with salt, pepper, oregano, and a bit of lemon and lime juice. You can toss it quite often. Avoid overcooking these vegetables that's not going to be good rather lightly cook them and once they're cooked you can leave them to cool just set them aside for now okay we are so close to being done let's finish this so the smoothie smoothie prep one of my favorite things so start by taking out two reusable ziploc bags you can use containers you can use anything that you want to store this in measure out one scoop of protein powder to each of these two ziploc bags and the protein powder that i use the vegan one is roughly 110 calories per scoop per scoop of protein powder and measure out roughly two cups of frozen strawberries and one cup of frozen pineapple pieces next you'll want to take out two small or medium-sized airtight containers for the yogurt and measure out roughly three quarters of a cup of yogurt to each container. I use a vegan coconut yogurt, which is unsweetened. You can use roughly 100 to 110 calories for your serving of yogurt. You can tightly seal the, the Ziploc bags and place them in the freezer, cover the yogurt containers with lids and put them in the fridge. Protein, hot chocolate. Yummy. So we're going to make three servings of this. Use reusable Ziploc bags or small containers, whatever you like. I like to mix half a scoop of protein powder and one teaspoon of cocoa powder into each bag. And then to a separate container, measure out half a cup of milk to a small or medium-sized container so that you can have three servings of pre-measured milk. You can use any milk you like, dairy or non-dairy. The unsweetened almond milk that I use is roughly 30 to 40 calories per cup. You can measure out about half a cup of milk to each small or medium-sized container so that you can have three servings of pre-measured milk just to throw together at mealtime. You don't have to pre-measure this if you don't want to. You can just measure it out on the day, but you know, I'm just showing you how to pre-prep everything. I'm going to show you how to put everything together. This is the final steps. Now it gets fun. These toaster muffins. This is breakfast one. Chocolate blueberry banana toaster muffins with peanut butter and berries. So once your batch of muffins has cooled, they'll be ready to store. I like to divide the muffins and toppings between separate food storage containers so that everything is ready to go for my prep meals. Divide the muffins into three servings. The recipe should make about four muffins per serving. Place each serving into a separate medium-sized airtight container. Then you can measure out one tablespoon of peanut butter to each serving. So each one can have one tablespoon of peanut butter. And then we've got some more containers for some raspberries to go on top. So don't pre-wash these. I don't find that they keep well if they've been pre-washed. So you can wash those on the day if you want to. I use half a cup of fresh raspberries per container. One and a half cups in total. And you can keep the muffins, the raspberries, and the peanut butter in separate airtight containers in the fridge. 
keep them in a cool place. Breakfast to the strawberry and pineapple protein smoothie prep. If you already followed the smoothie prep instructions, then you're already done with this. Once all of your ingredients have been divided into two Ziploc bags, different containers, you can tightly seal the Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer, and then cover the yogurt containers with lids and put them in the fridge. For the first snack, hot chocolate prep, yum 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 with banana once the protein hot chocolate ingredients have been divided between three reusable containers and ziploc bags you can put those in the fridge and then you'll want to have three bananas you'll have prep for three servings of protein hot chocolate and you'll have a banana to go with each each of these snacks snack two the roasted chickpeas once the roasted chickpeas have cooled fully, you can divide them into two servings, store each one, each serving in a reusable Ziploc bag or container. Just make sure they're sealed and covered properly and you can store that in a cool, dry place. So we made a lot of roasted pepper. We've got enough roasted pepper for five different meals that we're doing. You're gonna take two fifths of the roasted pepper now to put into the salad. I serve half of potatoes into one container and the remaining potatoes into the other container. And then using two smallish containers, you can divide the shrimp into two servings. If you did the vegan option, you'll have the roasted pinto beans. Then you can measure out four teaspoons of sunflower seeds between two very small containers. This is just gonna be two teaspoons per container. And then using some reusable Ziploc bags, I'm adding a handful of lettuce mix or baby spinach. You can use any kind of leafy green to each bag with a medium sized tomato. Just leave this whole for now. Or you can use one cup of cherry tomatoes for each serving instead of the big tomato, whatever you prefer. I don't wash that yet. I only wash that on the day also doesn't keep well in the fridge. So using two small containers for the sauce, you're gonna to wanna to measure out one tablespoon of tahini for each one. You can mix some lemon or lime juice, some salt and some pepper. Mix it all together, very easy to make. You can also add a little bit of water as you go if you want to. I like to do that. So once everything has cooled, you can put lids on everything, seal it and get it in the fridge. sandwiches as I said you wanted to use two-fifths of it for the salad and now we're going to be using the remaining three-fifths of it we're going to divide that to make three servings right now for these sandwiches and then you could divide one cup of hummus between three containers to make three servings which will be about one third of a cup per serving you can add two slices of bread to each of your three containers to store the bread so that's six slices of bread in total for bread, I'm using slices of bread that are roughly 100 calories per serving. These are some of the breads that I like to use that are roughly 100 calories per serving. So that is what I do. So for each meal, we'll have 200 calories of bread. And then just take a little handful of lettuce mix or baby spinach and divide that between three containers or bags and add two cherry tomatoes to each of these bags. I know this looks very funny right now, but you'll see when it comes together on the day. And then lastly, you can measure three teaspoons of sunflower seeds between three very small containers. So you have one teaspoon of sunflower seeds per container. I'm just showing you how to prep everything if you want it completely prepped. Dinner one, chicken curry with rice and green beans. So once the chicken curry, or if you did the vegan curry, you're gonna use that. Brown rice and green beans, once they're all ready and they've cooled, you can start to put your meal prep containers together. Serve the curry between three medium-sized containers to make three portions. 
And using three small containers, you can measure out one cup of rice to each one to make three portions of rice. Lastly, you can serve out some green beans and to di divide them between three containers and then you've got all of that prepped. Cover them with lids, it out lids and store it in the fridge. Dinner two, the last thing. Mm. Roast salmon with sweet potato veggies and tahini dip. So using two small containers for the dipping sauce, you're gonna wanna measure out one tablespoon of tahini and one teaspoon of olive oil for each one. You can mix the tahini and olive oil with some lemon or lime juice, some oregano and a pinch of onion powder, some salt and some pepper. Mix it all together, very easy to make. So then using two medium sized containers, I serve half of the sweet potatoes and half of the vegetables into one container and the remaining sweet potato and vegetables into the other container and then serve each salmon fillet into its own medium sized container. And once everything has cooled fully, store everything in the fridge and that is gonna make two servings of dinner, a roast salmon dinner. of your meals are prepped i'm going to show you how to heat them up or eat your meals on the day heat and eat so the chocolate blueberry and banana toaster muffins i like to keep these muffins in the fridge so that they stay fresh and then to give them that fresh out of the oven taste i like to heat them in the toaster or you can use a toaster oven i guess so in the morning i just like to slice each muffin in half and heat them up in the toaster or you can make them small enough to just pop them whole into the toaster, up to you. I usually place two muffin halves into each bread sort at a time in the toaster and toast them for just like a minute or two just until they're slightly toasted and warm and feel fresh out of the oven. Personally, I like to top each muffin with a small amount of peanut butter and a few fresh raspberries. You can substitute these for any toppings that you like. And that is a really good healthy meal prep breakfast that I adore. For your strawberry and pineapple protein smoothie, this is very easy. In the morning, you can just grab one of your frozen smoothie packs from the freezer and one of your yogurt containers from the fridge, and you can pour the smoothie mix into the blender with the yogurt and add about half a cup of water or as much water as you need. And you can add a few ice cubes in to make it extra chilled. Blend, just blend that up, pour it into a glass, and you can drink that. It's pre-prepped smoothie, and it only takes two minutes or less to put together in the morning. Protein hot chocolate and banana snack. So it's snack time, you can just stop by heating up or boiling some water to make your hot chocolate. You can just pour the protein hot chocolate mix into a mug with a small amount of hot water. I like to quickly stir and mix it until all of the lumps of the protein powder are gone. And then once that's done, just add more hot water and leave a bit of space for the milk. You can add the milk and stir it again. I actually just like to keep the spoon in there just to stir it occasionally as you go because it is quite thick, but it's very delicious. And you can just eat your banana on the side. Quite a good snack. Then the roasted cheese and onion chickpeas. It's just a vegan cheese, not real cheese. The great thing about the snack is that it's super easy to throw together on the day. It's fully prepped and ready to go. You can just pop your little reusable Ziploc bag in your handbag or wherever you're going or if you're just eating at home at your desk like I do, just do that. Eat it on the go. The spicy shrimp and roast potato salad. So what I like to do first is cut the tomato into pieces. If you used a whole tomato, otherwise you just throw your cherry tomatoes onto it. You can either make this on a plate or in a bowl, or if you're going to school or work, you can throw everything into a bigger airtight container to go with you. So add the lettuce mix and the tomato pieces or the cherry tomatoes. Next, you can add the roast potato and bell pepper slices, as well as the cooked shrimp and give the salad a quick toss. Last, I like to shake the salad dressing with a lid on in the container, or you can give it a quick stir before drizzling it over the salad. And lastly, you can sprinkle the sunflower seeds on top. 
and that's ready to go. pepper sandwiches i like to lightly toast the bread that's optional and you can cut the cherry tomatoes in half spread the hummus onto the slices of bread and top with the lettuce the roasted pepper slices and the cherry tomato halves and sprinkle a little bit of sunflower seeds on top this is one of my favorites it's so delicious and it's so easy to throw together especially when everything's prepped one of my favorites For the tomato chicken curry, the brown rice and the roasted green beans, this is very easy. You can heat your meal up whatever way you prefer. Personally, I like to heat up the chicken curry, the green beans and the brown rice together in a frying pan on the stove over a low to medium heat. I usually just put this together in one pan on the stove. I keep everything in separate sections of the pan, just toss it carefully and occasionally until it's heated through and then serve it on a plate and it's ready to go. You can heat it up any other way you prefer. And then the roasted salmon, the sweet potatoes, and the veggies with tahini dip. You can, again, heat this up any way you prefer. I recommend either doing this in the oven at a very low temperature. What I prefer to do is just do it in a pan. I actually sort of just break up the salmon a little bit, heat it in a pan very, very, very quickly, and then I heat up the vegetables and the sweet potato the same way, either in the oven, very low, or in a little pan on the stove. Keep everything separate in the pan and then you can just serve it on a plate and you can eat it with the tahini dip. And that's very easy to make and healthy and yeah. meal prep but I do find that as I've done it more and more often I've become quite good at meal prepping quickly and I can get it done in an hour so that is how I do it if you're just getting started with meal prepping it's probably going to take you a lot longer than that so don't get too frustrated but if you meal prep often you can get a lot quicker at it and things can speed up I really hope that you guys enjoyed these recipes I hope that you enjoy this meal prepping I really hope this is helpful to you it is some work to get it done initially but then you can go through your whole week of not having to cook and worry about so many dishes and all those kinds of things that just really take up a lot of time if you're busy and you've got a lot of things to do because that is what happens with me and then I don't eat properly and then I'm you know it's just everything gets out of control and my kitchen's a mess and it just, I just don't like that so, so I hope that it can be helpful to you I will link my meal prepping ebook below for you and you can get it on my blog so I'll link that below you click on the link and you can get it I also have a free shopping list download to go with this video for you so I'm gonna link that below for you you can go download it on my blog it's completely free you're gonna get a grocery list to all the ingredients that you need if you want to make these recipes that I showed you in this video today and thank you so much for watching I will see you guys again soon. Keep in mind that we're all different, so every woman has different needs different calorie needs to lose weight in a healthy way. If you'd like to follow a 1,400 calorie diet, you can go ahead and you can prepare all three meals and the snack for each day, as I've done in this video. For 1,200 calorie diet, you can have all three meals in the day. Just leave out the snack. And for the 1,600 calorie diet, just prepare all three meals. And then you can double up all of the snack recipes so that you have three meals a day and two snacks per day. For a 1,800 calorie diet or even more, you can prepare all three meals and double up on the snacks and even double up on an extra meal. Keep in mind that all of the meals in this video that I'm showing you and in the ebook, breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes are all roughly 400 calories. I've done that so you can mix and match things. 
and then all of the snack recipes that I've showed you in this video, as well as all of the snack recipes in the ebook, are all roughly 200 calories. This is also so you can mix and match what you like and the quantities whatever. I've made this meal plan and designed it for women, specifically for women who are trying to lose weight. Men or children will need to eat more to lose weight in a healthy way. Keep that in mind. And if you're not trying to lose weight, each day is based on roughly 1,400 calories, but you can easily adjust the calories per day to suit your needs.